Up Close is presented by Tenova Healthcare with six hospitals and more than 1,000 dedicated physicians. For more information, tenova.com. Thanks for joining us for Up Close. I'm Stephanie Aldrich. This week, we sit down with a band with Knoxville roots to talk about life on the road and the joy of coming back to hometown fans. Fans who knew them long before their videos were playing on country music television and they had received multiple invitations to perform at the Grand Ole Opry. For the Black Lilies, success has also meant playing more than 200 performances in one year. So, it's only fitting that after so much time on the road, they came home to perform in Knoxville to debut their third album, Runaway Freeway Blues. Whether you call their music Americana, Bluegrass, or Country, they'd rather keep away from the definitions and labels and just play. We talked with founding member Cruz Contreras and vocalist Trisha Jean Brady about the story behind some of the songs right before they took the hometown stage at the Tennessee Theater. Well, like a lot of your album titles suggest, you guys are just really at home on the road, but what's it like to be right back here in Knoxville? Is it different playing for the hometown crowd? Yeah, very much. Um, let's see, we get to sleep in our own bed <laughs> the night before. That's always a plus, right? That's a bonus. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's really, this, tonight's kind of a celebration for us, and it's really, I think you have all that support from your hometown and your family and friends, so. It's hard to do any wrong at that point. You know, they kind of carry us along, I think. Sure. Trisha, what do you think about being back home and being on a hometown stage? It's, for me, it's one of the biggest shows of the year. Um, we get to have, like Cruz said, this is our family and our friends, even if it's, you know, 1,200 of our closest family and friends. And the energy is there. You can feel it. it. It's mounting right now. I can feel it outside, downtown. I know that there's hundreds and hundreds of people getting ready to come. And they like to heckle us in the best way possible. Yeah. So I, and I love that. It we don't have to say very much because they'll oh. say it for us. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a Knoxville crowd for sure. We have very interactive audiences. Yeah. Is it important like to it. you that no matter how well known, how famous for lack of a better word that you get, that you continue playing in Knoxville or continue playing yeah. at the Grand Ole Opry? And you guys have even some kind of special honors with how many times you've been invited mm -hmm. there, haven't you? Yeah, I think it's the most important thing. It's kind of a finding. It's it's a sort of a bizarre lifestyle, and it's very easy to, easy to be um, ungrounded. I think so. Playing home is the absolute best way to do that. Spending time at home is the best way to do that. And we were talking earlier. Knoxville is really home for you, mm -hmm. uh, but you did spend a lot of time in Nashville as well, and yeah, it really I went, influenced I went, you as well. Yeah, I went to high school in Nashville and middle school there, and grew up around the you know, the music world there and so, ran into a lot of great players that definitely inspired me to pursue music. And that's why I came to Knoxville to study music. Tell me what you were doing as a job when you were 17 in Nashville. I was 17. I was playing piano at the Opryland Hotel five nights a week. And I was the, uh, the youngin' on the stage there. And I used to go down to Lower Broadway every night after the show and see a band called BR549 play and get snuck in the back door and <laughs> learned a lot and, uh, you know, yeah. Trisha, what's it been like for you to be at, uh, performing at the Grand Ole Opry so many times in one year? That's kind of a real distinction for you guys, isn't it? It definitely is. Nothing keeps you more humble than knowing you get to go to the Opry. And every time I look at it as a very special gift, and I just always hope to get asked back. Even time and time again, every time I get excited when we get to book an Opry. Well, the band that we've come to know and love as the Black Lilies today came together after you needed a break. Yeah. You, you, you needed a break after Robin Ella and the CC String Band. Why did you need that break and what did it do for you when it comes to your music? Well, you know, some of, a lot of things are necessity and uh, I played with that band and for almost a decade here in town and we were in our 20s and young and had a lot of energy and uh, when that came to an end, I just... Uh, you know, it, I had to walk away from it. It was, you know, my name was on it, my years of, you know, attention. So I just had to reevaluate things. And uh, I had had my CDL from driving a tour bus with the band. And I was uh, living in Maryville at the time and wanted to stay there. So I got a job driving for a stone company 
and very different way of making a living. Yeah, I you know I always like learning new skills, and it was exciting to do something different, and it was awesome to be around on the weekend and kind of get in a pattern. You know, like I could take my son out for dinner on Friday night, and you know, go watch a movie on the weekend. Which when you're doing music, your your schedule's backwards from everybody. You know, mm -hmm. so I actually I really loved it and uh, got to drive all around Knoxville and you know, see the, the countryside and learn about the town. I enjoyed it. But was music always there on your mind even while you were doing that? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, for me to, it, I'm a little obsessed with it. And I, uh, one thing I always tell people is, you know, even while consciously I was taking a break and I thought, who knows what I'll do next, but I was listening to w WDVX on the, you know, driving around and Definitely got, you know, kind of reconnected with the roots of the type of music that got me excited in the first place. And I remember one day listening to some Doc Watson and Gillian Welch, and I started singing in the truck, just didn't have nothing else to do. And then I got a call from Scott Miller one day, and uh, he asked me if I'd like to play some shows with him. So we played a show, we played two different shows at the Bijou, uh, one with Patty Griffin, and then one was his own show, and kind of got me interested in getting back into it, I think. Was there ever a time where you thought music is just going to be a weekend thing for me and not necessarily my, my main focus and main gig anymore? It's hard to imagine that today, I'm sure, yeah, but was there ever know. a time that you thought I'm not going to go back to it in the, to the degree that I had been doing it before for 10 years? I don't know. I, uh, you, I think with anything you want to see it grow and you want to mature. And So to me, yeah, I, I like you know, it's been awesome with this band. We put a lot of energy and time, and that's why we work hard at it, so we can, you know, do it on a better level or a bigger stage. And so, I don't know. That's not really my nature. Tricia, your music background, from what I understand, is maybe a little bit different. So often we'll hear people say, oh, I've been singing since I was two or three years old. Mm -hmm. I understand that's not exactly how it played out for you. No, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I, I sang since I was little, and my mom always kind of pushed me to do a little singing here and there. but. And my grandma would try to get me to go and try out for, for musical style plays when I was real young, but I had a lot of stage fright. And tell us a little bit about the story, other than that they needed female vocals in the group. How did you get into the group and actually be, become a part of it? Well, I will say that I kind of heard rumor for a little while that they were going to ask me, and I kept thinking, well, they better ask me if they want me to learn any of that stuff before we leave town, if they're going to do it. Um, and I, I was playing with the Naughty Knots here in town. And they and we were doing our little thing around, but they didn't really want to travel. And I, I knew I wanted to do something more than that. And so when I when they asked, I really wanted to go in there and give it the best shot I could. And luckily, it worked really well. I think. Was it ever hard for you to find your place in the group, or did things just seem to click right away? Because some of them have been together a real long time. Right. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that's not easy, no matter how great of a senior you are, or how much they want you to be a part of the group. Was it ever a little bit difficult no, to find your place? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I had tried to do harmony singing with a couple other male vocalists. The female thing is a little different, but and and a couple of them did not click at all. And I was like, man, I don't know how good I'm going to be at this harmony singing thing. But for some reason. Cruz and I really clicked with our voices. Well, let's talk about your third record, Runaway mm -hmm. Freeway Blues. Uh, is there a theme, if, the, if you would call it that? Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about the songs? Is there a the, theme uh, that kind of weaves through it? The line, Runaway Freeway Blues, came from a song called Smokestack Lady, which uh, I wrote, I don't know, about a year ago, and it's a duet that we sing together. It's a, it's a trucking song. And uh, yeah, I think when it came time to title the record, usually you know, it's like you get this group of individual songs, and, and I give the attention to the songs individually throw them together and then you step back and like well what do we have you know what is the theme here and uh, there was a few possible themes for the record but I think in the context of the year you know we did over 200 shows and made the record really from the road which was a, cha a serious challenge. Tell me more about the challenges because that, that was my next question is when you're gone away and you're on the road mm -hmm. playing so many days out of the year how in the world does this come together? Yeah, it's tough because, you know, the way we, you know, we travel in a van and sleep on floors occasionally, and so it takes really all your energy just to do that. So we weren't really, didn't have a chance to practice or prepare. You know, we booked the dates here um, with Scott Miner, and we got home, and it's like a day later we're, we're in the studio. and. and Lots of texts, emails, yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. trying to coordinate everything. Well, we had about 10 days, and in our mind, it's like, oh, we have October off. We're going to record. And it's like, no, you don't. You have 
to record and play 10 shows and you know it was just uh, in pretty intense. Trisha, how do you see if the theme from your eyes? I want, I want the female perspective too. <laughs> I definitely think it encompasses us being on the road. Um, there's several songs that are kind of paired up within that that Cruz was able to write from different aspects. You know, there's two that kind of deal with Colorado and history of like coal mining and things like that. And there's a couple of songs that he's written that are more military inspired because of his family and things like that. Um, I think this is a very family album even for us like we are a family we're on the road all the time together it encompasses the way we interact when we're on stage when we're in the van I mean we just we really have to come together and work together really tight to make all of that happen and it and it definitely came across in the album I think do you have a favorite I know it's hard to sometimes pick one or two but do you have a couple of favorites um, I've listened to it a couple of times and tried to figure out what I really felt like my favorites were and right now Catherine I just think it it floats. It just makes me happy when I hear it. When it starts out, I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I wanted that to sound like. And I think we all sound really good on it. Um, Ramblin' Boy is also one of my favorites when I'm listening to it. So, And it's funny, because I would think that maybe the duet, you know, Smokestack Lady is one of my favorite things to sing, but when I'm listening to the album, it's funny how it ended up being Catherine or Ramblin' Boy or By the Wayside the, with all the harmonies that really get me. Maybe you have different favorites from being on the stage versus sitting back and just listening? Yeah, it's totally different when you're up there playing it as opposed to sitting back and listening to it. So yeah, yeah, I, Ramblin' Boy is, I didn't know that was going to be one of my favorites on the album, and it really is. It's fantastic. But Catherine just kind of, I don't know, it's so personal to what Cruz's family is, and we've gotten to know them so well now that we feel like we're part of that same family. So to me, it's almost written about my granddad, too, you know, and it, and it comes across, and Billy's on it playing fiddle and it just sounds so amazing and, and I get a little emotional knowing that that's about their granddad, you know, mm -hmm. it's their family and they're, they're bringing it home for it. It's, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, yes, right? Yes, of course, yeah. of course. Cruz, do you have some favorites? I, I haven't listened to it too much. I mean, once, I you, get, once you. you get done <laughs> making it, you're like... It's hard, oh. it's hard to want to It's like listen. eating mashed potatoes every day for yeah. five yeah. years. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I personally like... You know, I do everything I can to make sure there's not a weak spot in sure. in the record. And I don't know. Yeah, certainly songs that are personal are extra rewarding because you feel like you're getting to give something back, whether it's to family or just, mm -hmm. you know, you know, fans who might come to a show and relate to your personal story. I, that means a lot to me, you know. I mean, I, I love making music and there's something Self, selfish about that, you know. I do it because I like doing it. But mm -hmm. when you when you realize that you are giving back, you know, to people, it's kind of makes it all make sense and feel like you're doing the right thing. So. Any uh, unique stories, I guess, from how um, the lyrics or how one of these songs came together for you, like where you were at the time, or any anything? There, most like of them that. have a pretty interesting yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. One, one that you'd care to share uh, about where you were and how it came to you. You can share about half of them. Okay, all about right. About half of them you can't share. What about um, what about glow? Glow. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't tell half that story. Tell you the know half what? you can tell. The the good half is it's a really sweet song and I needed to write a sweet song. I always say I needed something wholesome in my life that day. And I'm like, I'm just gonna write a nice sweet song and uh, it, it's, it's a song that kind of operates on a few levels and I tried mm -hmm. to leave it kind of open ended that way. Okay. I mean it means something very personally to me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it'll mean different things to other people. One nice thing was, it was the last song that I sang on the record, and Cash, it was, there was no one else there except me and the engineer and Cash. And he got to sit there in the studio and be producer and push the button. And, um, I understand you've stayed with the same recording engineer and studio for all, all three of your albums. Yeah, uh-huh. Has that been important to you also? To uh, it, it seems like you're very loyal to yeah, your hometown like, fans as well absolutely. as maybe people who've helped you along the way. I think that's a big part of what we do and think about so consciously initially. Like, I have to do everything in Knoxville. But I, I mean, you know, as long as I've been making music around here, that has been important to me. I like the community. I like this town. I like the whole area. And you know, I always my philosophy on it: what's what's good for my community and town is good for me. You know, and it's reciprocal you know so um, with Scott Minor we just we happened to live in the same neighborhood at the time and we're introduced to each other and it was just it was good timing and we also come from di very different musical worlds 
So I like that combination. I would say we, we temper each other. You know, we don't have the same taste or same approach, but he keeps me from being too cheesy and tacky. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's the, the guy with a good taste, so. Something else that's maybe viewed a little bit unique for you guys is um, that you're not associated with a label. Any, any desire yeah. to change that? No. <laughs> and why um, is that? Been there, done that. Um, now there's, I don't know what to say here. You know, the, like a lot of um, industries, you know, the past 10, 15 years have been really a complete turnaround for the music industry. And, um, you know, there's just a lot of th the things that a, a record company could or would do for an artist or a band, you can do on your own now. Yeah. Um, and you can do them more efficiently, um, can do them more inexpensively. Someone still has to do it. Doesn't mean these tasks don't have to be fulfilled. So it's in house. We do it ourselves, and um, I don't know. If it comes up and it's the right fit, it's not like we're going to say no because we're just anti wanting to be on a label. But if we can do it on our own, we want to. Yeah. Um, we're very independent as a band and as people. So I think that if we can keep it that way, we're going to. And that, that's one of the things I'm the most proud of. I think something also that's happened is it's become so much a part of like how people perceive us that a record company's like, we're not getting near those guys. Yeah, really, really, really <laughs> East Tennessee independent music, forget it. They're doing it on their own. But you don't know? you think, I think there's a little I think, bit of that. Well, but don't people tend to like that? Do you think they admire that about you too? Yeah, our fans do, they, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. Chris, you've been quoted as saying that, you know, you don't want to ever be painted into a corner. I, I don't think anybody wants that yeah. no matter what you're doing, but when people just ask you if they just happen to not be familiar with you, what kind of music do you play? That's just so hard to answer, isn't it? Good music. <laughs> That's the short answer. Right? I don't know. It's it's a conversation. You know, I can we can describe you know our uh, you know influences and our backgrounds, and you've got you know every single person in this band comes from a different musical background. You know, which is part of what makes it really strong. And yeah, uh, I th what's interesting as you as you play or you, as you um, maybe put out more records, people start to form an opinion of who you are and what you are, which can be a little strange. You're like, oh man, well, you know, some say you're a country band or you're this or that. And musically, I, I know we don't want to get, you know, pigeonholed that way. So, and I think our fans understand that too, that they, they know it's going to continually evolve. Trisha, is that ever hard for you to answer as well? Or are you just kind of like, well, I, I it's, we do yeah, a lot, we have a lot hard, of influences but here. I, I mean, we're labeled Americana. And I always tell people that's a really nice thing because it gives us the open leeway to do whatever we want. I'm like, I'll happily say Americana because that yeah. means we can do pretty much anything. And we do. <laughs> and it's like every song kind of changes. Every song kind of has a feel from a different era. And I think that's what people like. It's nothing is really mundane. Nothing starts to sound the same. And they like that every song has a different feel. And it goes in cycles, too. I mean, certainly the last year playing the Opry and being on CMT, we're, we're, we've been on a lot of stages where people expect to hear country music. So we have a, we have a stage for country music right now. So mm -hmm. I would say some of our shows are going to lean more that way. But if you see us at another festival, we might you know, go in a different direction, too. Are you ever surprised at all at the um, wide ranges of ages that you appeal to? Yeah, and the people that are most surprised are the people in the audience. I hear this all the time. People come up and they're all, like young people. They're like, "Why are all these old people here?" And the old people be like, "Why are all these young people here?" You know, because a lot of lot, there's a lot of bands out there that have like a more of a centered demographic. Like we, you know, everyone dresses this way and looks this way. I think it goes back to the kind of the family nature of of what we do. I mean, it's. I don't think it's not Sesame Street. I'm really proud of our wide demographic. I'm yeah, glad that my I grandma can come and all my little cousins can come and all the babies and my mom and everybody and they're all dancing. That is the coolest thing ever is to look out and yeah. see grandpas and little kids and everybody in between dancing it up and having a good old time. Yeah. yeah. And nobody gets them dancing faster than a papa out there doing his thing. What are you thinking when you're up there performing and you see just someone break out into dancing or song? I love and it. That you just it's, it's the highest compliment and it's you know, you feed off their energy, and at that point, nobody can do any wrong. You mentioned this a little bit as well, but being able to do some of the country music television videos, mm -hmm. that, is that something that you maybe didn't see coming a few years back? Of course or you, not, it, yeah. no, no. I think China, our manager, we share an office space, and so sometimes we'll just brainstorm, and it was just really like a, 
far-fetched idea. I was like, hey, you know, we need a video. And I said it sarcastically because, like, of course we can't afford a video. But as our manager, she took it upon herself to present the music to some directors. And she asked me, she's like, well, do you know any directors? And I happen to know a few that worked with CMT. And again, I was, it was just kind of like a, a dream list kind of thing. But they, a couple directors got back with us right away and like, hey, we'd love to make a video. And I'm like, well, that's a nice compliment. That'll never happen, of course. And then she continued a conversation with uh, David McClister, who's originally from Bearden and uh, has made his career in Nashville making all kinds of videos, but specifically country music. And um, we eventually worked with him and made the first video for Two Hearts Down, and then he did a video for Same Mistakes. What so. was that process like for you? I mean, you're used to being on a stage, you're used to being to performing, but how was doing a video so much different than that? Did you feel like you were stopping and starting a lot? What was that experience it's like? It's easier. <laughs> you sit there. I don't know. What I have a background in film, so I think uh -huh. I was the only one that kind of went in knowing what might be going on. Yeah. I just had never, I never thought that I would be in front of a camera on a shoot like that. Uh, th that was the weirdest thing for me because I, I went to school for it for a long time and taught it for a long time. Um, so I kind of knew going in it was going to be a really long day mm -hmm. and we were going to do a lot of takes of the same thing over and over. Um, and, I, and the guys were really good sports. I think they all had a good, we were worn out by the end of it, but we had a really fun day with it. Yeah, the video thing's huge too. So we have yes. two videos in the works right I mean we'll have more videos for this new record and we've worked which song specifically are you able to say quite yet are you yeah, still working I think on it so I'm working with a, a more of an indie director right now on a, on a video for the song called the fall which is the first song on the record and it's being has been filmed in Mexico which uh, is and we're not in the video so I really don't know what to expect completely he we may have been saying, scammed. he just hopes yeah that it was even being done I've seen it's a few really few shots <laughs> it's yeah. kind of a It'll be interesting. And then we have uh, plans for Catherine, and uh, we have a bunch of 8 millimeter footage that my grandfather took during the war that's going to be incorporated in that. So I'm really excited about that. And I'd love to, uh, once we get that done, do a smokestack lady video and get some chrome and flames going. You know, you do this because you love it and you, you accept the demands that, that come with it on just, you know, travel and yeah. your time and, like you said, being tired for the next thing and you just, you know, have to kind of regroup and, you know, find that energy and, and make it happen. What do you think, though, that fans maybe just don't really understand about what that schedule does for you? And it's not a complaint. It, it comes with the territory. But um, what do you think that people maybe just don't understand when it comes to doing what you do? Tammy Wynette said it really well. It ain't all sunglasses and autographs. <laughs> and it's not. I mean, it's, not, it's very much, there's a non-glamorous side to it. Um, but luckily, we're all travelers. We're all campers. We're all, you know, very, very happy being in a van. That's nice. At least we have that, right? Um, I, th I think they need to know that traveling is not always easy, but it's worth it for us. And we love it. And we do it for a reason. And, and we appreciate them coming to every show because that's what makes it worthwhile for us. Yeah. Sure. And I think we all... You know, one reason we do work hard at it is we want to get to a point where we can can take some time off, yeah. and uh, it's just you know give some attention and energy back home. And you know, I mean, right now my you know my family and and world is on the road and mm -hmm. this this you know which is which is awesome. But it, you know, sometimes I'd like to have a front porch and a dog <laughs> again. Sure. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you, too. You know firsthand demands on the road, and you've learned that sometimes something has to give, mm -hmm. and, it's very, and it's, that can be very hard on you or family life mm -hmm. and relationships. Now that you're seeing you know, such great success now with the Black Lilies, how do you, going forward, keep that balance now? You know, learning you know, from just what demands mean, you know, like you said, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure you keep balance today? I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm personally at a crossroads at this point. It's like, yeah, we've made it. We're playing the Tennessee Theater. We've got this new record and everything's really behind us. And then you look around one day and you realize you're spending 24 hours a day working on it. And then I think you, you ask yourself, why am I doing it? So there's got to, there's going to have to be some more balance eventually. I was cash the other day. He looked at me, he's like, he's like, you need to be around more. And I'm like, yeah, we need to, you know, so we'll get there. But it's also motivation to just really kind of get to the next level where we have a few more options as far as our time. 
That's great. Well, thank you guys so much for making time in that busy schedule, and I hope that uh, Knoxville and Tennessee in general is never too far in the rearview mirror for no, you. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. It's home, They're for real. Yeah. It's home, <laughs> always. Runaway Freeway Blues debuted number 43 on the Top 200 Country Albums chart. The Black Lilies have spent much of this year on the road, with performances scheduled all over the U.S., including South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, the Rochester International Jazz Festival, and of course, right back home in Tennessee. Check out their tour schedule to catch them in a city near you. And be sure and join us next week for another edition of Up Close. I'm Stephanie Aldrich. Up Close is presented by Tenova Healthcare with six hospitals and more than 1,000 dedicated physicians. For more information, tenova.com.